Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization VI as Japan. Things are going pretty damn well. We do have a war with Arabia, but that's not a very big deal. And we're also creating a whole bunch of great works. And we have finally hit about 200 tourism per turn. That means we're going to be pulling in a lot more tourists as time advances. But really, it's all about just trying to maintain momentum, keep improving things, make sure we're preventing any religious victories from Arabia, and keep grabbing and purchasing and getting as many of these artifacts as we can humanly get our hands on. Now, I'm also looking for another art museum, but I've kind of spent all my money, so it's going to be a little bit of time before I can grab that. Let's go ahead and organize by gold. And it looks like I am not trading with... Let's make sure I'm trading with as many people I'm trading with. Korea, Greece, the Ottomans, and Sumeria. The only person I'm not trading with is Arabia because I'm at war with him. So I'm just going to go ahead and take Istanbul here. That seems like a pretty reasonable one to grab, although Rhodes is a really good option. I think I'm going to go for the gold, the food, and the production here with Okoyama. And I think similarly over here, uh, this city is, is not like super useful, but I'm just going to pop it down. It's not the greatest city ever, but it, you know, these cities could be useful, trade routes, all that sort of jazz. And it's probably going to want its own investment. It's going to take a very, 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 very long time to get the harbor in here, but I'm not too worried about that. I do think that marks kind of like the, the, the true end of our investment into, um, into what you call them, into making settlers. I think we've, we've really hit the point now where investing any more doesn't really make any sense. And it looks like this indeed was coal over here, which is cool. And I'm really looking for, like, I'm really, really looking to get these industrial zone buildings online. So I, I've, again, I've talked about this a bunch, but I'm really kind of in a bit of a crunch for resources in terms of production and gold because I need to get everything online, but I don't nearly have enough gold or production to really get everything that I want online. So we're having to just kind of make do and try to make the best decisions we can with the resources that we have available to us. Let's go ahead and grab ourselves another artifact up here. This is a Gilgamesh artifact, and it is, in fact, a necklace. We have over here a... I, I, sometimes I have a hard time finding my museums. I've got a museum here with a little bit of stuff, and it looks like I've got some Renaissance stuff. I would need one more Renaissance artifact, and so we're going to have to wait on getting a couple more artifact diggers. Now, the good news is we are finishing up our Renaissance walls in a fair few cities, and we also finished the Colossus, which is a nice little boost to our uh, tourism production and we also finished military research so we could plug that in over conscription and get ourselves an extra two science per turn for every city that has finished renaissance walls and the number of cities that have finished renaissance walls should slowly be climbing i think i'm going to hard build the electronics factory in here i don't think i'm i don't think i have enough money to to purchase it in a reasonable amount of time so i'm going to hard build that up here for example i'm going to go ahead and grab the renaissance walls because this now represents an extra three tourism and plus two science so really i should already have it built but you know things don't always work out exactly how we want them to i have managed to build a whole bunch of lumber mills in shizuoka and make this into a very productive city to the point where it'll be able to build the electronics factory and then maybe i'll consider building the um what you call the factory as well the coal power plant. I'm going to be trading with Rhodes as well up here, trying to maximize the amount of food, gold, and production, and all that wonderful stuff that I'm getting in these rather weaker cities. But you can see here, Yokohama and Okayama, these are starting to become actually very useful cities, even though they're settled in objectively terrible land. This volcano and the use of trade routes and stuff like that have really kind of turned them around and made them very useful. Now, the plan was originally to turn this into a... Um, what do you call it? A national park. But with the coal power plant there, and or with the coal there rather, and how important coal is, this is probably just going to become a seaside resort location and we'll find another place to put down our very first naturalist. And I think we're very, very close to actually getting our... Now, unfortunately, uh, this mountain area was claimed. So I think we're going to have to wait on that. But what I would like to do is put one here. A national park but do i have a better spot for that no i think this is the spot i'm going to need a builder here as well i'm going to need a builder here as well and i need to replace this mine and these two tiles with forests getting to work on our very first national park which is going to be a big deal oh, there's a little bit of coal over there that we might have been able to grab we did pick up uh nearly uh 1200 gold from a spy steel which i'm a big fan of also in the capital uh, I think it's really, really important to buy the zoo at this point because that's going to provide amenities to a whole bunch of my cities. And amenities are a little bit of a thing that I'm struggling with at this time of the game. I'm also going to go ahead and pick up the temple 
uh, primarily for the faith, because a little bit of extra faith means maybe I'll squeeze out an extra naturalist or two. We've managed to finish the Renaissance balls in here, giving us a little bit of extra science. We have completed the theater square, the harbor. The water park could be a great source of tourism and stuff like that. I could also try to build a Statue of Liberty. I could try to build the Bolshoi Theater. Um, yeah, it's a hard choice to make here. These are all going to take way too long in a city with this much production. I think maybe the water park would be my best move because that's going to provide amenities. It's also going to potentially provide science and stuff like that on these coastal tiles. I already have the trade in the theater square. So the only thing that I'm really missing is basically whatever I want. And I think the problem is if I built... Yeah, yeah the water park is the best source of tourism, I think. It's just, it's just the best way forward. Okay, so Okayama, uh, this city has a lot that it wants to do here. We have some pretty workable tiles in respect to uh, a bunch of different things, but a couple of these aren't super workable. And so it might be good to just slap down a couple of mines around here too, to give the city slightly better tiles to work in terms of production. And then it can work on a thing like a water park, for example. If I place this water park near the harbor, that'll give the harbor plus one adjacency, which will result in a uh, boost to overall production, gold, everything else. So water park, uh, and the reason that I'm building the water park uh, for people who, who might not know, is that the water park gives you amenities, but more importantly, the building the Ferris wheel gives you plus two tourism, three culture, and an amenity as well. So that's pretty damn nice. All right, so I've got a two charge builder. Really, my capital could use some lumber mills. It's been a little bit light on production here. So definitely want to see if I can grab a builder over here and start filling out some of these flatland tiles. Uh, more production means potentially more tourism. Go ahead and pop that down there. Very nice. I do need to save up for an art museum in Sendai and I got my very first naturalist. What I'm going to do here is I would love to purchase a builder, but I'm going to have to wait a turn unless I do a trade deal with somebody who has a little bit of gold. I think the Ottomans have some gold and they don't have coal, so they might be willing to buy coal. Let's see. One gold for one coal. How much would you pay for 20? You'd pay one gold for 20 coal. So you really don't really don't care about that. What about Niter? I think your strategic unit relies on Niter. So you might be willing to give me like 100 gold. Maybe... Probably somewhere in the region of 150 gold. Sorry, that's uh, 15 gold. Maybe 140. And this is typically just how I do my trade deals, right? I'll kind of, I'll pick a number that seems about right and about fair. I'll just slowly decrease it until I get to a point where I feel like it's a reasonable deal. So there's the extra 100 gold. I can go ahead and purchase this builder this turn and start retooling and rebuilding this land here for the naturalist. Would have been good to have that pre-prepared, but you don't always get time to do what you need to do. We're going to go ahead and take surveillance on this guy and then go back to gold stealing over here. And we have to deal with this musk men as well. Mostly, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how things are going. We're working on steam power, which I'm a big fan of. We also have a potential golden age for the next era. And we're starting to extract some uh, great works from Korea. So I am not going to uh, take the diplomatic favor here in this particular game, just because I don't have a lot of room to trade diplo favors. Uh, not a lot of people want to buy them. Again, I would love to purchase the art museum in here. I also really need to purchase that shipyard. <sighs> hmm. Yeah, that's a hard one. I think we'll just get to work on the water park and we'll pop it right there. Because that'll give a bit of adjacency to the harbor. Sort of pretty standard stuff. It gives me tourism. It gives adjacency. I also need to get to work on neighborhoods. That's going to be a pretty important source of tourism as well for me. Um, the housing is less important. It's more for the tourism. So I'm thinking... If I pop this here, that'll give some extra adjacency to my theater square. So just like when it when it comes around, I'm going to want to place neighborhoods, if at all possible, giving the city even more production so that I can build things even faster. It's the 40 production. That's a 40 production snow city, which is absolutely nothing to turn your nose up at. And like we were saying, just keep stealing gold from Korea. I have a builder down here. I don't have a lot to do with them. I don't want to buy these tiles, uh, but I really should, considering just how bad this city is without a fishing boat. Like, the, the value you, we, we get from that is actually pretty huge. And I've got musket men running around here. I still have not cleared this barb camp, which is infinitely frustrating, I must say. Because I've spent so many turns with this archer down here. Well, it's a crossbowman now. But so many turns down here trying to deal with that. And uh, nothing ever just came to fruition for me. 
So this is the phase of the game that I would describe as the churn, where you're really just trying to make optimal decisions relatively quickly, like grabbing the Renaissance walls and then coming back for like neighborhoods and stuff like that. I think there is a plus six neighborhood right here. And you know, plus six neighborhood isn't terrible considering it's on a Tundra tile, which isn't otherwise super useful. So just having that placed in there will lock in its price, which is pretty nice. I'm also going to go ahead and get a neighborhood in here. Ideally, I'd like to put this beside my theater square again, just to get that little bit of extra adjacency if I can, but I think, let's see, how close are we to getting another artist? Yeah, I think, unfortunately, we are going to go, I'm, I'm going to hard build the art museum in here because it's only 11 turns. 11 turns is pretty slow, but with all things considered, it's not that bad. I'd also like to place my theater square in this city, and we're working on Renaissance walls first for the tourism and the goal, and the, the signs, rather. Slowly, we're already up to 213 uh, tourism per turn, which is a nice little bit of progress. Now, her culture generation is becoming a bit of a problem, so I might need to go to a different alliance type with her for the next era. So when our alliance breaks here in five turns, I think I'm going to switch that over. And we'll go ahead and start planting forests in here. And we can plant the national park right here. Although I am a little bit concerned that I might cover up a luxury or a strategic rather. So I'm going to hold off on placing that. It's, it's a couple turns of inefficiency, but I think in the long run, it'll kind of like be worth it all right so my goddamn archaeologist was kicked out of korean territory in the worst possible spot that they could go to that's a bit unfortunate because i'm gonna have to wait 13 turns before she will stop denouncing me and then i might be able to get open borders with her again she has a lot of science right now, which is concerning, as does Arabia. But I think the big concern is whoever is generating the most culture. And right now, it looks like the biggest culture is Gorgo. So I think I need to switch away from the cultural alliance with her to stop feeding her culture to make things a little bit more difficult for her. Also got a great admiral here, which is really great. Artist. Uh, I wonder if I can get peace with Arabia. I wonder if he'll pay me. He wants to buy iron. Okay, sure. You can buy my 20 iron. Deal. So I have peace with Arabia and that's important because now I can get open borders with him and generate 25% more tourism pressure against him specifically. Okay, a few more tiles. We've got a bunch of mines up here, so it's unlikely we'll place national parks up here, but that's fine. I'm also going to go ahead and use Qingxi for the 500 gold, and that's going to allow me to come over to Sendai and immediately purchase the shipyard to get this city producing. And then the next thing I'll buy is the art museum. You can make the argument to get in the art museum first, but I think the production investment is worth it. Let's go ahead and keep popping down more of these. I have one more tile that I'd like to place a forest on just to make sure that this is not harboring a strategic resource that I might want access to later. This is a very, very weird game in a lot of ways, but I think that has made it much more enjoyable. So there's mobilization, and the big thing is I need to get all my walls finished. <laughs> I need to get all my walls finished before I research ideology. So I'm going to go have a look through my city's production and see if there's any cities that still haven't built their walls. Like, for example, over here in Aomori. It would be good to get those walls online. In fact, it would be good to get a builder over here as well. The city is really, really struggling without a builder. Renaissance walls are being built here. You are working on your amphitheater. You're working on medieval walls. Renaissance walls here, harbor. Really should grab the harbor before that. The ancient walls in here only take six turns. And the ancient walls in here will take 20 turns. But that's not a big deal. As long as I get some of them done. So Renaissance walls are done in Oka Oka Yokohama. And we have the Holy Site Harbour Theatre Square. Now it would be good to pick up the water park. In particular, I would like to put it next to the harbour, again, for adjacency bonuses. But I think right here is perfectly fine for the water park district. I would also like to place a neighbourhood. And the neighbourhood doesn't actually have to be a very high quality neighbourhood. It just has to be a neighbourhood. If it's beside the Holy Site, though, it'll give me a little bit of extra value. So I'm going to go ahead and make that decision. Then we'll go water park. And at some point, we'll build the neighborhood because we want to unlock the shopping mall here that gives you plus four tourism as well as a little bit of gold and amenities. And having high amenities is always really nice if you can afford it in the late game. All right, moment of truth. We can place a forest here. That means that I can safely place a national park here without disrupting any strategic resources. That's our very first national park, which will result in a rather large tourism income of 16. 16 tourism income is four per tile. Not the most amazing, but we can improve that as the game goes on. We have a harbor, we have a theater square. I want the holy site and I want the water park. I'm trying to think, holy site would be good. Um, these are seaside resort tiles, seaside resort tiles. 
I could put the entertainment complex right here. That would have a double whammy of giving me some amenities, a little bit of tourism, as well as some adjacent appeal for the tiles that I'd like to put seaside resorts on. So I think that's actually a pretty reasonable thing to do. But I'm a little bit starved for tiles down here. So I think instead what we'll do is we will come down here and pop a holy site right there. I think we want to get a little bit more faith income if we can get our hands on it at this point. Uh, although it's probably a little bit late to be investing in faith income, all things considered. So that might be a mistake. I got to really think about that one. We're going to go ahead and just repeat our trade routes. I think our trade routes are pretty reasonable at this point in the game. Uh, I don't, oh, Jesus, even more, even more musketmen pouring out of this barbarian encampment down to the south, which means I can't really improve these tiles all that much. Capital finally has a couple of extra lumber mills, meaning that it's starting to become a very productive city. My capital is surprisingly one of my weaker cities in my empire. There's another great artist, and uh, we will get you positioned over here. Now, Sendai, I want to purchase the art museum here. Now, I do like archaeological museums more, but that's fine. So there's a portrait. Let's have a look at our great works. Do we have any portraits laying around here? So this is the art museum in Sendai. All right. Let's have a look. We have a landscape, we have religious art, and we have some other random stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and pull a Hieronymus Bosch painting into here, and I'll also grab a Qi Jung portrait into here, or, or painting into here. And then we'll, we'll kind of do some rearranging as time goes on. Right now I'm just concerned about getting things relatively well established. Capital City has finished the temple. I want to build a neighborhood in here as well. I'm trying to think of where I could place it. That would give me some good adjacency. I don't want to put it here because it would kill a really, really nice tile. I don't want to put it here. I think I might just pop it down here to get a little bit of extra adjacency on this theater square, as well as the potential for a neighborhood. Although maybe you could make an argument that that wasn't the right move. I think it's a reasonable move. We got the water park over in Okayama, which means we can get to work on the Ferris wheel, which is plus two beautiful tourism. And we'll also work on a neighborhood and I would like to pop it right here beside this sort of stuff. I'll probably just pop it right here. Not super important, but it, it, it'll, it gives me a way to convert my production into tourism, which is something that is important to me. That is something that I need to work on and keep building up my capacity to generate tourism through any means necessary. I basically want to optimize and get as much tourism as possible. We're already up to 254 per turn alongside a wonderful 28 out of 145 tourists. All right, brilliant. We have finished our very first electronics factory, gained a little bit of era score, and there's even more units now being annoying over here. Unfortunately, haven't been able to deal with that, but that means I'm going to go ahead and hard build my coal power plant and start powering this local area. We also have not a whole lot happened this turn, actually. Not, not a whole lot, but we are getting to work on even more forests and even more lumber mills. I think we finished ourselves another spy. And it kind of looks like Korea is making the most money. So maybe I could steal from their second best city as well and start just completely milling their income. If I could mill their income, then they're going to be in very bad shape. I'm going to have a very hard time actually completing their win, win condition. All right, just popping down a bunch of forests in here, not improving them as of yet. I think they're they're kind of fine the way they are. And we'll, we'll get those lumber mills placed in the near future. Although you could make an argument that building the lumber mill is more important than placing the forest, I guess. If you really wanted to. Now, okay, Gorgo, our alliance is running out. And I think Korea's hatred of me is also starting to go away. Now, our alliance with Gorgo. Okay, he's a sycophant. Great, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, okay, so unfriendly, sorry, alliance with Gorgo runs out in next turn. And the denunciation from Korea runs out in eight turns. So hopefully I can turn that relationship around. We do have a regular golden age. There's quite a few things here that could be worth it. Reform the coinage would be good just to get a huge amount of gold here in the late game. You could also make an argument for Heartbeat of Steam, although that only really helps me building wonders and campus, campuses uh, giving me more. And I don't really have a lot of campuses, so I think I'm going to skip that. I think the best decision here, I mean, two arms, I don't plan to go to war. I've already settled on my city, so we're going to pick up Reform the coinage and get a big boost to our gold income, in theory. In, th in theory, we should get a relatively large. There you go, 440 gold. We have completed the water park in Takamatsu. Let's get to work on the Ferris wheel. I'd like to get the neighborhood online. I think I'm going to pop that neighborhood right there, right beside that district to give a little bit of adjacency here, up to four adjacency on that one. We have completed ancient walls in Hakodate. Beautiful. 
I could take suzerainty of these. Not worried about suzerainty. I am going to take suzerainty of Bologna, however, because those are the extra thingy points, great people points, and great people points are things that I think are great. Pangala has been neutralized, which does make me sad. I'm going to give him the curator promotion so that he generates more tourism, even if I'm not going to get value for that for about nine turns, which again makes me sad that he has been brutally murderized. All right, so I got a frigate and a crossbowman to help out here. I'm trying to clean out this nonsense that's been running around here for God knows how long at this point. Another lumber mill popped down in Nagoya. Although, is that a Kyoto one? That is a Kyoto one. Do I want to take that for Nagoya? What I do want, however, is a place to place the neighborhood in this city. So let's go ahead and grab a tile. Oh, I should have put it there. Oops. Hmm. Um... This tile doesn't matter except as a productive tile. So I'll probably just chop it next turn and then slap a slap a neighborhood down where it used to be. All right, World Congress time. Beautiful. I'm going to ban... Uh, I'm going to vote to discount the production of coal. I'm going to vote to ban oil power plants twice to hopefully divert away from coal power plant production. And I'm going to vote for great works of writing to generate more tourism. I like that. And I'll vote once for myself, and I'll also vote to pass the World's Fair. Hopefully I get the outcomes that I want here. Okay, great. Oil power plants have been banned, thankfully due to my extra voting. Uh, I think otherwise it would have been a bit of a wash. Although I probably could have got away with just voting once. And it looks like tourism from Great Works of Riding has been doubled, which is excellent because I get a lot of tourism from that. And it looks like Korea won the diplomatic victory points, which is fine, not a big deal. We're in a new era. Let's go ahead and remake friendship with Sparta. This time, we're going to go ahead and get a uh, religious alliance with her to get extra faith from our trade routes with her. We don't want her getting culture from us send and sending trade routes to her. So you can see how her culture per turn has dropped by almost, yeah, let's say, 13 to 20. And we're also going to go ahead and declare friendship with the Ottomans. And instead, we'll get a cultural alliance with him because he is a little bit less far along in terms of culture. So I don't mind sending him culture with a trade route. And that way I can keep trading with him and get really high yields. We do have a thousand faith in the bank, which means we're going to want to start thinking about our ne next nat national, natural, national park, natural park. Hmm. Okay, Gifu has a bit of a loyalty problem, but I do have someone not so important in the form of Magnus. Let's have a look at the loyalty of this city. The loyalty of Kobe is pretty bad actually i was hoping that in the golden age i would actually be totally fine i'm gonna have to figure out what i can do in here to get extra loyalty because that's a minus 6.5 and i think this is unfortunately gonna have to be one of those moments where i reassign reina even if i don't want to over to um gifu and that will secure that i'm also losing fukushima because it's a little bit isolated over here the loyalty in here is minus 12, so I'm going to have to reassign Liang over to Fukushima. And then I'm going to have to figure out how the hell that I get this city what it needs. It's definitely going to involve a builder and a lighthouse. So we'll get that lighthouse to help the city continue to grow. We need to grow this city ASAP to get itself a little bit of local loyalty. Uh, if I have my religion nearby, that would be good. How fast can you get down here? to convert this city. I'm going to send an Inquisitor down. How many charges do you have? You only have one charge. I'm going to go ahead and grab myself another Inquisitor to send down there to secure my religion. Big worry is that they'll get killed on the way, especially with these apostles running around. I think I'm willing to risk it with the one charge and then I'll walk the other guy around. Ancient walls at long last. We can get to work on some of that stuff in Nagoya. Ancient walls next. Um, we'll see what else we can do. Renaissance walls finished in here. Let's get to work on the... Hmm. The temple will help the city grow. So actually spreading my religion could be useful in terms of growth. We'll also go ahead and grab the Ferris wheel in here for the culture, amenity, and the tourism. Re Re uh, Rembrandt is going to create a portrait. And then I'm going to send him up to Okayama to make another religious artwork. We're waiting for the art museum here. Some of these cities really have not been getting enough attention, considering how much attention they need, which, you know, I feel a bit like a neglectful father, but well, what can I do, right? I just, I just don't have the resources to dedicate to every single city. We'll chop to finish that wall in a single turn. 
and we'll also make sure that we place down the plus four neighborhood here to secure a potential extra source of tourism in the late game almost up to 300 tourism per turn which is starting to look pretty good we got a moderate flood over there it's fine let's see we're up to 33 out of 150 tourists required and we have another great rider beautiful and this one will probably be placed in the capital so let's see if we can find the capital move these great works over to takamatsu click click there you go and then we'll get to work on you pop you in there Choose the escape route, escape on foot, 900 gold acquired, beautiful. I always select uh, escape on foot, it's the only one that I trust, uh, because it has the highest chance. Anytime I've clicked anything else, I feel like my spies have been immediately caught. So I'd rather just wait an extra turn or two for the spy to come home, than to take the risk of them like immediately dying and all the resources that I invested into them disappearing uh, instantaneously. Saladin might be open to a friendship with me here. And he is. And then I'm going to go ahead and get an economic alliance with him. Which means the only person I don't have an alliance with is uh, Korea. Uh, I should also reopen my trade routes with him. So I think that's going to involve paying some money for a trader. also want the lighthouse and stuff like that. Now Fukushima, again, is having a real problem with loyalty in here. So that's going to involve potentially purchasing things like the shipyard to get some stuff done faster. I'm gonna have to try and figure out how I get extra loyalty in here. It's gonna be a bit of a, a bit of a difficult thing. There's the religious work. So we've placed a uh, religious work in here. I'm gonna grab a Hieronymus Bosch work in here, and then I'm going to look for a Michelangelo work. And then we've themed the uh, art museum in, in Okayama. Let's double check that we don't have any duplicates in the places where we move stuff around. Looking just fine. We do have a couple of por portraits, but they're mostly from Rembrandt. So we just need some more great artists and we'll uh, start figuring things out a little bit better. I don't remember what great works of art that this guy produces. Looks like too religious and a landscape. So we can kind of start to maybe get to work on theming a couple more art museums. Okay, so that's what I was worried about and I'm okay with that. It was a one charge inquisitor that I sent there. So I'm happy with him. I'm going to try and escape this one around the corner to try to convert Fukushima to give it an extra three loyalty. The happiness level is also a bit of a problem. So I might need to like look to divert away. The other big problem is that as the loyalty in the city gets worse and worse, the productivity of the city is going to get much, much worse. So I'm going to go for the water park to start improving the loyalty in here. I'm also going to start repairing things to get the growth in here up. And I might even, I don't think I can really afford to put farms down. But the big thing is to see if we can get the growth of the city up. And that might involve purchasing a trader in here and then doing like a domestic trade route for food. Get to work on the Renaissance walls as per usual. Renaissance walls finished in Kobe. This city has like really, really been neglected. It's actually in like terrible shape um, considering where it should be. But we are slowly now building the harbor. Medieval walls over here. I'm going to go ahead and harvest the woods and then place the mine. Because otherwise I feel like the woods aren't really doing much. Okay, that's really unfortunate. Um... Medieval walls, renaissance walls. We just have to put one turn into the renaissance walls to secure them. I'm going to go ahead and take contractor on Reina because that'll give me some more options to spend my gold. And the fact that makes me want to move Reina over here. So maybe I'll even do a reassignment of Reina over to Fukushima because then I can maybe purchase the water park and then assign you to Gifu, which is my other city that was losing loyalty. So we're holding on to our loyalty pretty well because we're in a golden age. This trade route wants to be with Saladin. Beautiful, perfect, although Mecca would be a better trade because it's worth more production and science and faith. We'll trade with Mecca, lovely. We have trade routes with every sieve in the game. We're up to 37 tourists at 152. So things are looking really, really well. We're making 300 tourism per turn and we are top culture. Pretty competitive on science, I would say. Not super competitive, but we're doing pretty okay. Especially thanks to the doubled tourism or, or doubled yields from Great Works of Writing. That's really helping out right at the moment. Killed the scout over here. Let's improve the mine. And we have finished the holy site over here. Oh man, for sure I want the archaeological museum. 13 turns is a long ass time, but I can't really justify purchasing it considering how squ how squoze for gold I am at the moment. I'm going to go ahead and teleport this trade route down to Fukushima because the city just needs like two traders to keep the city supplied and growing, which will buy me more time on the loyalty front. 
slowly working my way around with an Inquisitor as well. But they, they take some time to get into position, you know? But that'll also help with the loyalty, because because I founded a religion, any cities not following my religion will lose loyalty. And that could actually be useful in Gifu. You can see here, if I click on this loyalty button, not following your religion, whereas you compare to Takamatsu, it is following my religion, so it gets a positive of three. That's a, that's a net swing of six. If you don't found a religion, you don't get that penalty, as far as I remember. So there is a downside to founding a religion. If you're going to do this kind of a strategy, I would be very careful. Now, we do have, finally, access to power, and that power is powering basically the entire eastern side of my empire and a little bit of the center over here. So that's really, really good. That access to power is going to be very useful. More importantly, makes the city incredibly productive to the point now where I would consider getting something like the Crystal Redentor, although I really want the Ruhr Valley. But the Crystal Redentor is just so incredibly important because it gives me... Um, tourism from relics and holy cities but also 100 percent tourism from seaside resorts so that's like super 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 duper 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 d duper d duper d important unfortunately this game i wasn't really able to get the wonder building great uh great engineers i think they're in here somewhere have they even been claimed i don't wait have they even been claimed they should have been at this point i didn't see them Oh, it looks like the Wonder Building guys just never came out this game, because I guess maybe Industrial Zones were a bit late this game. But I, I would absolutely love to build the Ruhr Valley, but the Crystal Redentor is just so much more important. And I'm going to have to try and figure out how to get more production into this city in the meantime. Probably we'll have to plug in, once I have Ideology and Democracy, I'll plug in the card that gives me a 100% Industrial Zone adjacency. I'd also love to build Broadway, Bolshoi Theatre, all that sort of stuff. But again, really just need to get work on workshops and that kind of thing to get my productivity, my production and my gold are, are, are you know, all the things that I need to build build things. Working on the Ferris Wheel in Yokohama. Ferris Wheel completed in... Okay, Yama. I could go for the aquarium. This does give plus one science to coastal resources, which is a great source of science in this kind of a game. Or I could get to work on the neighborhood, which would set me up for research and capitalism in the not too distant future. Hmm. The amenity here is actually really, really powerful, considering just how low amenity is I am right now. I could also, if I wanted to, I could go to the global resource tab and just look for luxuries that I could maybe get my hands on through trade. I think if we look here, I am playing as um, Japan. So I just have to look for somebody who has like a surplus of a resource that I don't have. So like diamonds over here. It looks like I have basically everything that I could reasonably acquire. Although Arabia does have two copies of these things for 10 gold per turn, which is six amenities across my empire, which is, you know, a not insignificant amount. We got our art museum here. Let's go ahead and place the Adoration of the Magi. So the Adoration of the Magi was placed here. Hieronymus Bosch has another great work of religion that I could pop in there. Unfortunately, I don't see any other great works of relig religion. Let's have a look at the thingy here. Did anyone else get a great artist? Okay, so Gorgo has a great work of religious art that I might be able to trade for. Let's have a look. 21 gold per turn. It would take almost 470 gold to buy this. Let's see if I did 450. 425. So for 430. 430 for the Asunta from Titian. Beautiful. That's going to slot right in there and instantly theme this. Where is it? There's Titian. I shall pop it in here. So now I've got two themed museums. And I might just hold off. I do have another Hieronymus Bosch. So if I got myself another religious artwork, maybe I could sell something off and grab another religious artwork to theme another museum. We'll have a look and think about that. There's the art museum completed in Osaka. I think it would be good. Let's see, we've got Theater Square. We don't have a commercial hub. We don't have a holy site. Not a very good holy site available. I don't need an industrial zone in here because we're getting, you know, productivity from other sources. The commercial hub would be good for the trade route and the gold, but I think gold is a little bit late at this point. It would be good to just build things that give me tourism. Entertainment complex is just another way to generate adjacency for my theater square, as well as amenities to help make up for the fact that I'm really really quite low in amenities at this point. I need to start taking care of that problem. All right, Fukushima, we're going to be looking for things that give me food and production. Um, 
ideally. So let's go ahead and organize by food. Looks like trading with myself would give me a lot of food. So I don't think that's worthwhile. So we'll go back to the gold ranking. We're going to trade with Mycenae. And we'll also trade with Adana here. So that'll bring the city up to a nine turn growth cycle, which is good. I think I might actually move away from the water park and then just try to purchase that when Reina is finished in here. Apparently all of my gold has disappeared. Excuse me. What? I accidentally gave 400 gold to Gorgo. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, how many turns ago is that? Oh, that's... Oof. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can fix this. I guess I misclicked, and I just didn't realize that I was trading gold per turn. I gave her, like... I don't even know. I, I, I need to go look at that footage and see what the hell happened there. That's very weird. I could have sworn I was just trading gold, not gold per turn. We reloaded a little bit. Not the end of the world. It's fine. Archaeological Museum. You hang on there. So we're going to have to do a little bit of reorganizing again. The sort of stuff that we already did. It's going to be a bit of a repeat. And I'm kind of going to forget what exactly I, I did. It's like I have, a, I have a goldfish memory, dude. You know, I just kind of forget really, really quickly. But I know we did some pr pretty standard stuff that I would do again, right? A lot of tile improving, a lot of moving stuff around. Pretty, pretty, I feel like, standard things. Okay. <laughs> Man, I, I don't know how I managed to trade her, you know, 300 and whatever gold uh, in totality, which is a bit weird. Um, okay, so we have a trader here. I think I had meant to purchase a trader in here as well. We'll go ahead and get that squared away. I want to organize this by gold. We'll trade with Mycenae. Mycenae, not Mycelium. We do have the coal power plant in here. Let's go ahead and delete that pin. I can't believe I forgot to get rid of that one. And I don't remember what the hell I went for in here. Oh, it was definitely the Crystal Redentor. That's definitely an important one that I want to get my hands on. And I did only just unlock that pretty recently. And I'm pretty far ahead in the culture tree. So I'm not too worried about anyone beating me to that. Uh, we did finish the temple in Fukuoka. I could work on some of these. I mean, Panama Canal. Mm. No. I'm going to work on the workshop. Ferris wheel. And the aquarium. Art museum completed in here. And I think we made the call to go for the entertainment complex in here. As well as moving this guy down here. So, what we had planned to do <laughs> originally was uh, place a great work of... Uh, <laughs> place a great work in here, grab the Hieronymus Bosch one, slap it in there. Okay, so we've got two Hieronymus Boshes. Then we were going to go to Gorgo and be like, hey, Gorgo, give me the Ascension, 21 gold per turn. And I meant to give her like 400 gold. 21 gold per turn. I, I see what might have happened. So if I give her 440 gold, she'll accept 440 gold. Deal. Okay, so we just traded gold that time. Great. Now we go into our great works. We have a look around here. Here is Andrei Rublev. And we've got the two themed art, religious art museums. Beautiful. Okay, so we managed to kind of get back to where we wanted to be. <laughs> Ooh, I feel a little bit silly about that one. Uh, for a misclick like that, I have absolutely zero qualms about uh, reloading or saves coming, as some people like to call it. And I, I think, really, if you if you make, like, a mistake, like, because that wasn't, like, and, and my justification for any sort of strategic, like, for any sort of reload or save scum is always, like, did I do something I meant to do? Like, if I do something that I meant to do and I screw up, I have to live with that, like, decision error. But if I do something that I totally didn't mean to do, I'm not going to live with that if it kind of, like, seriously ruins my game. Neighborhood completed in Kyoto. That's great. That sets us up for a shopping mall. I think there's only a couple of things in here that I would consider building at the moment. One of them is an encampment. One of them is a uh, commercial hub. And the other one is potentially some wonders. So, for example, I could go ahead and grab the Bolshoi Theater. I think I'm going to get to work on the Bolshoi Theater in here. It's only a 28 turn build time. 
although it will delay some of the other stuff that I want to do. I'm going to go for the Bolshoi Theatre. Broadway would be fantastic for the extra uh, culture output, but I want to see if I can squeeze in just a few, just a few um, great work thingies, what you call them, uh, wonders, just a few wonders, right? So we do have room for El Greco to place another religious work of art in Kyoto. So I'm going to need another art museum somewhere. God knows where the hell I'm going to find room for another art museum. Uh, I do have plenty of cities, though, to work on more theater squares, so that's going to be a delight once we finally get around to actually doing that. Lumber mill in Fukushima. I think this city is looking pretty okay. I do want to trade for more food and gold and stuff like that. We're down to a seven-turn build time. The loyalty in this city is starting to be a little bit more stabilized, which is great. I want the long-term stability of my empire to be secure. However, I do have a little bit of a problem in that when it goes to the next era and I potentially lose my golden age, things might not look so bright and shiny for me. Now, next national park. Let's have a look at the appeal. So the appeal in here is just a little bit too bad for a national park. That's fine. I could maybe swing a national park in here if I replace this tile with a um, with a thingy. Why can't I remember the name of the words? A forest? I would have to get a builder in here at some point, though, to do that. All right, let's have a look around. Where have we got the appeal? Well... There's actually a national park right here. The problem is getting this all owned by a single city. Now, if I were to do this, that's a national park right there. So I think we'll do that. Managed to grab ourselves a natural park. I don't plan to improve those tiles anyway. This guy escaped from a thing. I'm going to go ahead and take the quartermaster promotion because if I ever use him to defend, he will be pretty useful in um, making all of my other spies more effective. That's what the Quartermaster promotion does. There's plus one era score for discovering electricity. And the real key things that we want to take away from electricity is the seaport and the ability to unlock the uh, computer's technology pretty quickly at, at will. Now, the next thing we want to pick up is flight and radio. So I can basically just click on computers. That's going to give me a 25% boost to tourism across my empire. Flight is going to give me tourism from culture. And radio is going to give me access to the seaside resort. So, pretty great. I'll be able to rush computers. And it also allows me to very easily sidestep any of the sort of problems from climate change of me burning all this coal that I plan to burn. Let's go ahead and declare friendship with Sumeria and reinvigorate a research alliance. We'll also slap in open borders and trade a bit of gold from him. Beautiful. Thank you for the deal. And here's the really, really important thing. By managing to keep... Uh, Anyone who is a threat to me, an ally, I basically have never had to build a military. And that's a really, really sort of high level thing. Um, once you figure out how to manage diplomacy and like make sure people don't hate you, you can get pretty damn far in this game. Now, I also want to build seaports because they give me plus two science, but they only give me plus two science for a very short window because the, where is it? I can't remember exactly where it goes obsolete. Military research goes obsolete i believe it's space race or globalization yeah, yeah it goes obsolete at space race so i'm only a few civics away from that so if i'm going to get the extra science out of seaports i need to get them built now now nagoya is a particularly good city to get the seaport in because i'm working a lot of these coastal tiles so that'll result in a lot of gold you can make the argument for the coal plant and the electronics factory and all that stuff not super important i also have access to another spy next turn when i finish ideology so that's something i'm going to want to work on uh, we got our Renaissance walls in here. I want to get my harbor. I want to get my theater square. Um, I'm going to go harbor first. Although there's something to be said of maybe not doing that. Instead going theater square first. Theater square it is because I'm running out of room for theater squares. Let's get those Renaissance walls finished. Uh, once ideology is finished, I'm no longer going to have the lion's card. So all walls are going to be built much slower. So walls are going to be essentially more expensive and less valuable to me. We are up to 350 tourism per turn though, which makes me a very happy boy. And I have even three, three musicians ready to go. Once we have researched radio, we'll be able to pop down a bunch of these broadcast centers and essentially finish out... Uh, a whole bunch of great works of music really, really quickly. Now, this guy, I believe, was stealing from Cairo. Yes, he was. So I'm going to send him right back to Cairo. Just basically want to steal as much gold as possible to fuel my economy. 
Now, I definitely need an archaeologist over here, right? There's lots of these uh, artifact sites, so that's going to be important. I thought I'd switched away from this. I guess the the reload didn't help with that, did it? No. Bit of a problem over here. Nothing that I shouldn't be over to over uh, be able to overcome with a little bit of patience. Again, I feel like I have been very patient. We'll go ahead and grab ourselves another national park. Beautiful. That's also going to provide us with amenities as well as a nice chunk of tourism. And the city gets to shoot as well. Beautiful. The nice thing about going for all these walls too is that all my cities are actually quite well defended in terms of... Okay, Korea denounced me again. That's unfortunate. So she's chained denouncing me, which means I'm going to generate less tourism against her because I can't have open borders with her. I can't trade with her, which is fine. So there is, um, there is ideology. We now get access to some really, really great stuff. In particular, the five-year plan gives me industrial zone and campus ad uh, zone adjacency or potentially commercial hub and harbor adjacency. And I think the commercial hub harbor adjacency makes a lot more sense right now. I should have totally, by the way, um, had that one card plugged in that I didn't unlock. I keep forgetting that they changed this card. And it's this card all the way over here at, Mer uh, at military training. Veterancy. This makes harbor districts 30% more efficient to produce. I keep forgetting this card exists. Since I haven't used it this game, I'm going to continue to forget it exists and hope that nobody else who watches my videos has noticed at this point. <laughs> um, okay, so we have Vissel Banking plugged in. I don't want any of these things in terms of a military policy. The only one that really jumps out to me at this point is Levy en masse for a little bit of extra gold. But I think it might be good... To plug in what? Yeah, I think Levy on Mass is the real real winner here. We're up to 440 gold per turn. Beautiful. El Greco is El Finito. Oh, my sweet baby rays. Can we please just stop what you're doing right now? Just chain spawning barbarians. I've never had a chance to even get close to well, I I did get I actually almost cleared that cleared that barb camp once. And I'm really upset that I didn't get to do that. All right. Plus one great admiral found. I'm going to go ahead and pick up the seaport because the city doesn't really have a whole lot of good tiles to work. And the seaport will provide me with science, food, gold, and lots of lots of gold on my tiles. Admiral, you make a promotion and experience. You do that. That's fine. You hang on there. I'm going to pop you out. You should be safe from a retaliation there. They are going to try and hammer that, but that's fine. Next turn, unit needs orders. Okay, can we convert this city? We have, at the very least, uh, prevented it from following another religion. Excuse me, I'd like to click on the loyalty here. Yeah, so the fact that it's following no religion gives me... It eliminates the minus three from following other players' religion. So if I can get it to follow my religion, I get the positive three. So we'll... keeping it neutral is actually kind of fine with me as well. Because now it's only falling by point zero, uh, point, uh, 0 0.3. Wow, okay. So I guess a ranged unit just appeared out of the fog of war. This is just very annoying. <laughs> Can we appreciate that? that? That's very annoying. Okay, so the entertainment complex is completed in here. Let's go ahead and get the arena for the little bit of culture and tourism, as well as the amenity. All right, brilliant. A lot of my decisions at this point of the game are fairly automatic because I've already set kind of in motion my plan. And really, it's just about executing a plan that I came up with like a pretty long time ago. One thing we could do is search for the Crystal Redentor and see if anyone else is building it. I don't think anyone should be building it. Oh, you are building it. Hmm. And you get pretty significant production bonuses, but I believe you're building that in Ephesus. Ephesus shouldn't really be that productive of a city, I feel. No? I kind of wish I could see how productive their cities were. I don't know how long she has been building that. She is further along in construction compared to me. That's going to make me want to look for ways to get extra production in this city. I'm going to prioritize production. Maybe I can get this in time. Really... Uh, once I have suffrage, I'll plug in the wonder building card. That might help a bit. Okay, we have our workshop in here. We'd like to build a neighborhood. Not in a rush. Maybe I am in a rush. Let's get the neighborhood. That's a way to generate tourism. 
convert the city one more time. It follows my religion. Beautiful. I'm going to send this trade route over to Shizuoka. Maybe a single trade route might shave a turn off that and help me secure it, which is really, really kind of like my main priority at this point in the game is to make sure that I secure those wonders that I'm trying to build. In particular, the Crystal Redentor. The Crystal Redentor is a huge deal. Um, as is the Eiffel Tower, but I don't think I, I don't think I have a really efficient way to get to the Eiffel Tower right now. I'd have to basically kind of redirect my entire empire. I do have three thousand gold in the bank, um, which makes me want to come over to Reina here and purchase that water park. Shumpf. Swap Reina. Although I'll wait a turn because I could purchase my theater square in a single turn in this city if I wait a turn. So we'll go ahead and do that. Trade route. I'm looking for production. I'll trade with roads because that's gold in production. Uh, indeed, shave to turn off this. I'm going to be like checking this and this pretty regularly to see if I can beat her. Next turn, I'll plug in the wonder building card. Nothing. There is suffrage. Let's go ahead and switch over to democracy. This is the best government in the game for a culture win. I'm going to keep public works. What I definitely want is skyscrapers. I um, also would love to plug in New Deal. I really want five-year plan for my extra production. And now it kind of becomes uh, a bit of a hard decision. What do I want to plug in? Triangular trade would be really, really good. New Deal would be really, really good. Um, Vis Vis Banking is really, really good at this point in the game. I think I'd like to plug in Machiavellianism because I can get more spies and use my spies more effectively with that. I would also like to plug in... Man, Triangular Trade is just so good for the stage of the game that I'm in. Because I have 10 trade routes. 40 gold and 10 uh, faith per turn. That's a pretty significant amount of gold and faith. The other thing that I could go for is... Um, Grand Opera. Which would give me a huge amount of culture per turn. So I think I'm going to plug in Grand Opera. Although I usually try to skip that card. That was really not that much. <laughs> I was expecting way more than that. Maybe a lot of my cities just don't have the adjacency that I thought they did. I was going to expect a lot more out of that. I think part of the problem is I haven't seen a cultural city-state that's boosting them as well. Okay, so now that we have democracy, we're going to go ahead and pick up capitalism. That'll give me uh, access to the shopping mall, which is a way to convert production and or gold into tourism. Fukushima, let's go ahead and purchase ourselves a theater square. I'm going to pop this one. Um, there actually isn't a very good spot for one. Yeah, really. Not a very good spot for a theater square. I'm just going to go ahead and pop it on this lumber mill, which I regret building now. Then we'll go ahead and purchase ourselves the amphitheater. Then we'll go ahead and swap Reina. I'm going to assign you to the capital. Back to the capital you go. You're finally available. Reassign Reina over to the city that Co Magnus is in, which is Kobe. And then reassign Magnus to Fukushima. Because now I can start using my gold to sort of rapidly sort of catch some of these cities up in terms of district district production. Okay, Ferris wheel completed here. This is another city with a seaport. Kind of makes sense a little bit, but not as much as some of my other cities. The seaport would be okay in here. I think I would much rather get the aquarium um, or potentially work on the neighborhood to get ready for the capitalism influx uh do i have a neighborhood in this city uh it's this is always the hard part is trying to keep track of what you have and have not built seaport in here is pretty okay not amazing so I, i'm happy to skip it so we'll get to work on the neighborhood over here we're waiting for another art museum okay this builder needs guidance for his career oh my sweet Baby Jesus. Absolutely absurd the number of barbarians that come out of the encamps now. All right, let's go ahead and steal 600 gold from Cairo. I'm going to go ahead and steal 700 gold from Korea. Definitely need to start building more spies. Um, we are going to finish the Crystal Redentor in 11 turns instead of the stated 20 that we originally had. I think we're now kind of on par if we compare these two. We're still just slightly behind, but I think 10 turns might be faster than she can build it. We'll have to keep checking. I really, 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 really hope that I get it. 
don't have any more trade routes that I can slap in there to shave turns off, really, as far as I can tell. All right, trying to just hammer away on these guys to get them to go away. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll never clear this barb camp, but just, like, have it be a thing that I used to farm. Oh, Bologna's getting murdered. Hmm. That's annoying. Maybe they'll survive. Patala Palace is available. It's already probably, almost certainly already been built. Now, the seaport in here makes sense. I also need builders around here. And Liang is in position to get me a couple of builders. So I'm going to go ahead and get a builder in here to start developing these cities. I'm going to slowly build an amphitheater. It's like trying to get all my resources in the right place is, is a very difficult thing. Now, I already have the amphitheater in here, so I just need the archaeological museum to pick up all this stuff. I also need an art museum. Just, again, it's like it's a very stressful game of trying to find things and put them in the right place. Find the things that I need and get them to where they are needed. You're not allowed to capture my coal. Thank you very much. We are up to 370 tourism per turn and 62 out of 164 tourists required to win. I think we're off to a pretty damn good uh, clip here. We've stolen somewhere between 10 and 15 tourists from each civilization in the game. And Gorgo is currently our number one opponent. We could do something about her, but I, I think I'm pretty happy with how things are going so far. So I'm just going to call that the end of the episode. I love you all very much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.